put it first. Okay, so today in a breakout room too, we already have a Dr. Gede Agus Widya Dana, PhD. Thank you so much once again, Dr. Gede, Gede for supporting our EJSA team. Okay, and then after that, we will have also Dr. Resma yeah, to join uh, our uh, sessions, our presentation sessions uh, later on. So in this room, so in this room, we have a three tracks, yeah. We have three tracks under the track of information technology, supply chain management, and sustainability studies. Okay, with seven presenters, yeah, with seven presenters. Okay. Okay, so I would like to once again remind all of the participants. So please kindly fill the attendance forms. Yeah, later on also the committee will type it in the Zoom chat box. Okay, so before that, before we start the presentation session, allow me to read the profile of our session chair today. Okay, so first session chair, we have IGD Agus Widyadana, PhD. So Dr. IGD Agus Widyadana is a senior lecturer and head of e-logistic lab at Petra Christian University, Indonesia. And his research interests are deteriorating inventory models, supply chain, simulation, and optimization and have an experience as a guest researcher at Sofia University, Japan. And he has published some papers in reputable journal, such as Omega or OMEGA, and also International Journal of Production Economics and International, International Journal of Production Research. He also served as a reviewer for some reputed journals and the editorial board member of journal Technic industry. So in the industrial practice area, he has experience to give training to some industry and has certification as supply chain manager. So once again, welcome Dr. Gede Agus in this HSA team 2022. Thank you, uh, for your uh, introduction. Okay, uh, to make it fast, let's uh, we start our uh, session today. Oh, we. Oh, oh yeah, wait a minute, Dr. <laughs> yes, hold okay. on. I know that everyone is feeling enthusiastic to start the <laughs> sessions, but we still have one profile to read for. Dr. Okay, Esma. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, hold on. Okay, yes, and. For the second session chair, we have Dr. Resma VK, PhD. So Dr. Resma is a PhD recipient in information and computer engineering from Nurul Islam Center for Higher Education in 2021 and Master of Engineering in Software, in Software Engineering in 2012 from Sri Ramakrishnan Engineering College, Coimbatore Bachelor of Technology in Information Technology in 2010 and from PSR Engineering College, Sivakasi, both affiliated to Anna University, Chennai. Her research area is image processing, steganography, neural networks, and machine learning. And she has contributed more than 20 technical papers in SCI or Scopus and other international journals and 10 plus paper in various international conferences. And she has published more than 10 patents in her field of the expertise and also focus on multidisciplinary areas. Granted to Australian innovative patent, German patent, granted international patent, and awarded as India Prime Award 2021, top 100 professor, Young Researcher Award 2021 in Institute of Scholars, India Glory Award 2021 as Young Professor Award. And currently, acting as a reviewer, editor in a various journal and conferences, and also being a session chair for various conferences, both nationally and internationally. And she is presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning in Hindustan, 
colleague of engineering and technology. So that will be our second session chair that will join our breakout room uh, later on, yeah, later on. Okay, so by that, I will pass the floor. The next session is to Dr. Gede. Maybe Dr. Gede can read first about the guideline for the presentations yeah, to the audience. Please welcome Dr. Gede Agus. Yeah, thank you, Santi. Uh, now it's my turn. Okay, this is uh, our guidelines for a uh, presentation today. That uh, first, the presentation is limited to 10 minutes. Yeah, therefore, uh, I will uh, give you information if your uh, presentation close to uh, 10 minutes. And then we will have uh, five minutes for a Q&A after the presentation. Okay. And <clears throat> The audience yeah, and other co-presenter can ask questions using the chat features, okay? And then I will uh, read uh, your questions, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and then recording of presentations is low and make sure that you are in a place free of noise to avoid disruption of the presentation. And then, okay. Uh, Please uh, make this uh, presentation uh, run uh, smoothly yeah, in this uh, chair. Therefore, we can have a good uh, discussion uh, later. Okay. Uh, next, uh, first is our uh, track of information uh, technology. We have uh, three presenter in this uh, track. We have a uh, Kieran uh, Boy uh, Ocean Elinsano, uh, are you here? Hi, Dr. Gide, I'm here, Pop. Okay, thank you. And then the second is uh, Wei Chung Xiang. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay. And then uh, Kwan Chun Huang. Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. We uh, already have a uh, three presenters for uh, information technology uh, track. We can uh, start our uh, session uh, now. Yeah, please uh, do presentation uh, clearly and uh, on time. Yeah, we only have uh, 10 uh, minutes. Okay, uh, now for uh, Gerard Boy, uh, Oscar and Lisa, no time is yours. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, am I the one who's going to share my presentation through my Zoom? We can yeah. we can share the screen yeah. also if you want. I, I can also do so, but um, as of the moment, I need um, I need to have my Zoom enabled so that I can share my screen. Is this the one for the presentation? Yes. Uh, okay. yes. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Gede. Um, and of course, um, I hope Dr. Resma would be able to follow. And then uh, to our session chairs, um, Ma'am Santi, our moderators and our fellow researchers here, good morning. So I'm um, Joran Elinsano, um, presenting on behalf of my fellow researcher, Dr. Michelle um, King from the Dallas University. And for this morning, I'll be discussing our research about factors that lead to adoption and use of online bank account opening through um, EKYC using uh, unified theory of acceptance and use of technology and its extensions. Next slide, please. So in, in the Philippines right now, according to article uh, published by one of the um, news uh, um, publications in the Philippines, financial exclusion, or in that sense, exclusion, is still a trending uh, social issue in the Philippines. In 2017 specifically, 22.6% of Filipino adults had a formal financial account. And um, with that, our BSP uh, governor, our central bank governor, um, became very supportive of the EKYC or the 
updated way on how to open um, a bank account. Um, next slide, please. Just to give everyone a background, so uh, in terms of know your customer or doing a due diligence in terms of bank account opening, there is a traditional way on how to open a bank account and an electronic way on how to open a bank account. In the Philippines, only four out of the 10 domestic local banks use eKYC for a bank account opening. So with this, next slide. We would like to answer the question of what are the factors affecting the intention of use of EKYC for online bank account opening. By default, of course, if it is presented to the customers, it could lead to easier bank account opening, faster account, bank account opening and the like. And it's also more convenient for them because it's being done uh, not in the bank per se, but you can do, uh, you can do bank account opening. Um, through a uh, few um, clicks in terms of your keyboard, few uh, taps in your phone, and you can already have a bank account. With the COVID-19 pandemic, this became more prevalent in the Philippines because and the need for this one um, has become more important because uh, people are not allowed to go outside and yet financial services are important uh, to be done during the pandemic. However, again, only four out of the 10 domestic local bank as of the moment use EKYC for the bank account opening. So the study is about determining what could be the factors in terms of the customer perspective that would lead us to use EKYC. In terms of theoretical foundation, this would allow us to um, understand the, the main constructs that can be used in terms of understanding the behavioral intention for this specific topic. On managerial implications, on the other hand, this will allow the banks to understand what are the things that they should focus on and improve on so that the, the adoption for EKYC would dramatically increase. Next slide, please. So for the literature review, we used um, the Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology by Venkatesh as the foundational uh, theory for this one. However, there is, um, with the literature review of mobile and internet banking, there are some observations that we have seen. Okay, um, next slide, kindly click. Okay, um, based, on the, uh, based on the table that we have seen, according to the def different authors of Merhi, Alaluan, Chawoli, Oliveira, R. Sharma, and Martins, there are some inconsistencies that were seen with the results meaning the different constructs of UTOUT, depending on the research done, the country, and the like, provided different um, level of significance or insignificance on the different literatures that we have seen. Um, next slide, please. Also, aside from that, there are additional constructs that were added to the original UTOUT so as to make sure that the theory is aligned with mobile and internet banking. These um, construct are trust and the other one, and the other two are, next slide please, perceived security and perceived privacy. And so with this one, we, we propose that the um, operating model, next slide please, for this study should incorporate trust, perceived security, and perceived privacy to understand the use behavior of the, um, or the use behavior and adoption for EKYC for the bank customers. Next slide, please. Now, for the research methodology, so the first one is hypothesis building, and then based on the uh, review of related literature, we modify the different hypotheses that we had so as to make sure that it is in aligned with our study. This research methodology is adopted with the um, findings and the methodology used by Alaluan, Akinwesi, Hanif, Lawoli, Martins, and Oliveira. We've conducted a seven-point Likert survey based on the literature review. But before rolling out the entire survey to the uh, more um, audience, we had an initial feedback using um, Cronbach Alpha and um, pilot survey test. We modified our survey question so as it became more friendly because some of the audience might not need or might not be able to understand EKYC as a term. Then we determined if our we have adequate sampling sample using KMO and Bartlett test of spiricity, calculated um, 
loading composite reliability to make sure that the framework can really be used to predict the um, behavioral intention and then eventually we did a regression analysis next slide please so the results uh, that were found is as follows. So we found out that there are two significant constructs that will uh, that are important in terms of um, EKYC adoption in the Philippines. These two constructs are the facilitating conditions and then perceived security. To make sure that we further understand the reason behind, we did um, further research on this one. And we also interviewed um, one of the survey participants on her answers about the survey questions. And these are the things that we have found out. Next slide, please. Since the survey question was um, done February of this year, wherein we are already transitioning into the new normal, according to the respondent and to um, the research, um, mobile and internet banking has been intensively used, specifically since 2020 to 2022. Its ability to perform well has uh, also been tested already. And actually, 90% of the respondents agree that EKYC can help in terms of achieving the desired performance account opening. This result is um, similar to the outcome of the research of Alaluan, Chawali, Martins, and uh, Merhi et al. Next slide, please. Now, in terms of effort expectancy, um, given the digitization and increased adoption to mobile and internet banking, EKYC is indeed seen to be more efficient in terms of account opening. Uh, the effort expectancy is already given. This is something that doesn't need to be proved on. Instead of going to the bank, okay, according to the survey respondent, it is far a lot easier to just sit down, do a selfie, and open a bank account. Next slide, please. In terms of social influence, according to ANABO, uh, for uh, a study on social influence on customer financial product preference showed that social influence are just becoming significant when choosing products that are unfamiliar. But bank account opening is something that, that is familiar to most of the people. So why this is already not significant in terms of the finding. 97% of the respondents already opened an account and so they know the process already and bank account opening process is not new to them. Next slide, please. Now we go to one of those two that are significant in terms of the study. Facilitating conditions is found to be significant in this study. This is aligned with the international findings of Alaluan, Chawali, and um, R. Sharma. And this is also aligned with the Philippine study on the mobile and internet banking. While the mobile and internet banking adoption has been increasing, the use of um, selfie and or video call is relatively new to the customers. One of the respondents even asked how will it be done just in case it will be pervasively implemented in the Philippines. Therefore, necessary knowledge and technical know-how of this new technology, the selfie, the video KYC, um, is a factor of intention to use. And as such, it was also recommended that, that the UI UX must be looked at intensively. Next slide, please. Now, trust is inherently part of the performance expectation in terms of financial applications. In interview of the one of the survey responded, it is found that trust is known to be inherent in financial transaction. And so, therefore, if performance-wise it is working properly, then therefore trust is also presently there. It is also related to the fact that a lot of financial transactions are already being done online. And so trust is inherently provided already. Next slide, please. Now for the perceived security, it is uh, found to be significant. And the reason being is that recently uh, with the news uh, in the Philippines, there are um, several hacking incidents. And so uh, the security of uh, the banks must be looked at. Recently, news about an authorized fund transfer of 700 bank accounts in the Philippines came out. And so this can also provide an explanation why, while people trust it, um, they also expect, still expect the banks to have um, a trust in terms of knowing or determining um, the account opening process. And then um, lastly, next slide please, in terms of the perceived privacy, this is surprising as well because it is found to be not significant. 
specific to the Philippine context, a 2017 survey says that privacy is important to 85% of the Filipinos. Among the respondents, 94% would like to know how how that they um how they, they should submit the transaction and applications are going to be used. In that the same survey, it was found that banks rank third as the most trusted institution with respect to privacy next to schools and clinics according to Venueza and Michael in 2017. As such, given the high regards of Filipinos on how to value privacy, such may not necessarily be significant in terms of EKYC given that this is already being pervasively implemented. Next slide please. Now to end the presentation, um, I'd like to quote and provide a, the social impact of studying this one with bank account opening easier and me being uh, being easy for a lot of people it will actually open a wide range of opportunities for financial services even to those unbanked and based on studies if we open those financial services there would be an economic progress especially for those um unbanked and such it will lead to financial prosperity and economic uh, progress in the country with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to the presentation and I'm open for the question and answer portion. Hey, thank you for an uh, interesting presentation uh, here at, uh, by uh, Austin Elisano. And this uh, topic is quite uh, interesting now and uh, very related with uh, current condition. Okay. Uh, I give opportunity for anyone. Anyone want to uh, ask a question for uh, Gerard Boy? You can uh, type at uh, chat. Okay, I will check it first. Anyone? Or if you uh, to hesitate to uh, type questions, maybe you want to uh, just uh, raise hand and I will uh, give you opportunity to ask questions for Gerard Boy. Okay, not yet. Okay, I uh, have uh, questions. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it is qu uh, quite interesting that uh, perceived, uh, quality, perceived trust has a uh, relation with uh, performance of the application. Uh, can you uh, <clears throat> describe uh, more about uh, this uh, interesting uh, finding? Okay, um, based on the literature review that we've conducted and based on the interviews, when they conduct uh, financial transactions, given that these are sensitive transactions and these are this one involves money, um, customers if, um, expect that trust is already inherent in the capabilities that must be present in the mobile application. This means that um, the banks are expected to ensure that um, transactions are legitimate and our mon the, the money of the customers will not be stolen. So this is similar to how it is being conducted in a physical branch and in, in, in a mobile app. So in the physical branch, there are different steps that are being followed to ensure that the identity of the customer is verified. And with that, they also expect the same level of verification and identification with regards to using online platforms. This is different because in terms of um, branch transaction, it is uh, a human being who's doing the KYC it's a human being who's verifying the transaction. Now, that process of digitization is also the same that must be um, linked and must be present online. With the pervasive use of technology and with repeated use of online banking, especially during the pandemic, trust was already earned because it is working and um, most of the transactions there are successfully being done. So if it is, let's say, um, an era of, let's say, 2000 or 2001, 2002, it would be very difficult to earn the trust because the, um, the pervasive use of such would be uh, minimal. And so with the, with the performance working well, 
and with transactions uh, that are being done seamlessly with online banking, people are slowly earning, based on their experience, the trust of um, using online bank account opening and online transactions for financial services. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, there is one uh, question. I think from uh, Santi. What is the main motivation of conducting this study? Is there any specific reason why you use uh, the old yeah, UT, AUT model in 2003? Because right now, I think the area are new mod there are new models proposed by test to expand the previous the previous uh, model. Yeah, thank you for that question, uh, Mam Ma Santi. So, um, the 2012 version of extended uh, unified theory of acceptance and use of technology was considered. However, based on the literature review, um, those extension or additional constructs like the hedonic motivation, price value, and the like. Um, actually doesn't provide significant factor in terms of mobile and internet banking. So based on the several literature reviews that was previously conducted, uh, those uh, are not significant in terms of mobile and internet banking. So maybe in terms of other applications, it would really be um, uh, best to put them and consider them. But for mobile and internet banking, results show that uh, those are not important. And so the most important factors that must be considered in terms of this one are the extension of trust, perceived security, and um, perceived privacy. And so those are the things that we have included since this is more of a banking application and financial transactions. I hope I answered your question uh, well, Ma'am Sati. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kevin uh, Boy. Uh, it is quite an interesting topic, but uh, the time is up now. And then we will go to the uh, next uh, presenter. Uh, the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin Boy. Uh, the next uh, presenter is uh, Professor Wei Jung Chiang. Hello. Can you Hello? hear me? Uh -huh. Yeah, we can hear okay. you. Okay, time is yours. Yeah, uh, I I try to share my uh, screen. Can you uh, see my screen now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I may start my uh, presentation now, right? <laughs> yep. Hello. Okay. Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. Start now. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, good morning, Doctor Gade. Long time no see. Okay. Yeah, long time no see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I need to uh, wear my mask uh, for the presentation. Sorry about that. And uh, my topic is a study of AGV collaboration with Internet of Things concept for collision avoidance at a warehouse intersection. I think the old, there are three authors. I'm the second author, and the first author, uh, she is from Indonesia, and uh, she studied her uh, master degree in CYCU, and uh, right now uh, she graduated, and I think uh, she uh, fly back to uh, Indonesia right now. I think she's in uh, Java Island, so I need to uh, present uh, her work. And the third worker is, uh, third author is also my master student. Uh, today my presentation just, uh, part of our research, the first part, the primary part of our research. Uh, the, the Gandhis, uh, uh, she has done more work, but it's not included in, uh, in this paper. So this is our outline, uh, for my presentation today. So uh, why we want to do this uh, research? Because right now I think the industry 4.0 is very uh, popular, and uh, we want and during the pandemic uh, we want to uh, just keep uh, away. Uh, you know, we don't want uh, people to have a so close interaction. So we we may want to uh, have other uh, machines to help us. So. Uh, in the industry 4.0, we have like an IoT Internet of Things, cloud computing. 
big, uh, big data analysis and uh, smart devices. And uh, in this paper, we want to uh, apply the Internet of Things technology to develop a HV network for the smart warehouse, right? And uh, also in this uh, paper, we use like a robot operating system. We call it like a ROS. It's a Linux system. Uh, we want to apply the ROS system with the IoT concept and we can build up the AGV motion control and uh, to do some experiment to prevent the collision at the intersection, at the in, uh, warehouse intersection. And I will show you the video later about our, uh, one of our experiments. Okay, uh, in this pay, uh, paper, AGV max motion decisions based on the location of two AGVs accordingly. Like uh, in this uh, experiment, uh, Primary experiment. We only have two AGVs, and uh, to check the how they uh, how they move. Okay, All right. And the uh, AGV is supposed to interact and collaborate to complete the assigned activities automatically and uh, increase the agility of their movement. And uh, because it's IoT Internet of Things, here you can think about like AGV are things and. Uh, we can connect each other and uh, communicate with each other in real time. Then uh, during their motion, they can do their job. And uh, if there is a, a in intersection, they know where where's the position of or the location of the other another uh, AGV, and then they can avoid to collect uh, with each other. So the objective uh, of this research are design a collaboration system between uh, two AGVs through the wireless communication environment using the Internet of Things concept to perform the task, okay? <clears throat> so let's uh, talk a little bit about the background. First of all, let's talk about the AGV. The AGV is an automatic guided vehicle. And uh, I think uh, during, uh, we can see the uh, definition of the, from the Wikipedia here is like, and the, from the photos here, we can see uh, many different kinds of AVGV and uh, because we talk about in the warehouse. So that's why I, you can see some uh, example uh, like the, the AGV moving in the warehouse and uh, some with track, like at least, uh, the middle one with track and the, the other one, the, you know, the, the other two with, with no track on the, on the ground. What we did uh, is like there's no track on the underground, okay, uh, underground, okay. And uh, a little bit uh, history about the AGV here, like uh, it's it's not a new technology. It's already uh, been there um, for a long time, okay? And uh, there are many uh, different kinds of AGV uh, based on their size, payload, battery hours, and the navigations, okay? And uh, this one shows what we have, uh, what we have in our, in our lab and what uh, what do we build up for our, our experiment? It's a neuron bus. Uh, it's uh, developed in the in Taiwan, uh, uh, AD Link company. Okay, that company is a uh, com uh, industry computer company. Okay, they use like a, a neuron software development kit and uh, it's a Linux system. So it's Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu uh, eight, 18. Point Zero four, whatever you know, like, and there is a ROS system, robot uh, operating system uh, one and the two, and they use an Intel uh, pro processor. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, let's talk about the uh, IoT a little bit, uh, Internet of Things a little bit. Uh, it's basically we uh, we use like three three layers of architecture to build up our system. Things is under uh, is uh, in the bottom, and that's for the sensor or the robot or the AGV, and uh, we communicate through the uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. In our case, we use Wi-Fi to communicate, and uh, we can do some computation in the cloud. Here we use a, a, a central computer, a computer to do the to the job. Okay, and uh, several uh, research already uh, use this kind of architecture. 
to build up their AGV system. Uh, it's, uh, you can see the ribbons here, uh, like a physical uh, layer, cyber physical, uh, cyber uh, layer, and the system layer. And then you can also see the AGV system here, okay? So uh, let's talk a little bit more about the ROS, uh, robot, ro robot Operating System. It's an open, why we want to use this one? Because it's open source, so it's free, okay? And uh, it's a meta operating system, and uh, it's uh, created by Willow uh, Garage and uh, maintained by Open Robotics. Uh, you can uh, see the here. And uh, in this paper, uh, why we want to use ROS is open, open source, free, and uh, basically the ROS can communicate uh, with each other. So we that's why we want to use this uh, system. Basically, this shows uh, how how two things, how two robots communicate uh, with each other. They they have like a, uh, for each ro uh, robot is just like a note, and uh, it can publish uh, the message to the master, then communicate uh, with each other. Then the other one will subscribe the the message from the master. So that's why they can communicate uh, with each other, All right? And uh, Right now, let's show my uh, our research methodology. We build up uh, like a AGV collaboration uh, system, and uh, this is the structure for that. And uh, you can see three layers. The uh, the bottom one is the robot, uh, the AGV here, and uh, we communicate through the Wi-Fi network. And uh, we can uh, have many application applications in our central computer or in the cloud. We can. I uh, have many uh, completion uh, application codes here, okay? And uh, as I say, uh, uh, the the contribution of this uh, uh, conference paper also like, uh, we only use um, because uh, from the previous one, we have two masters uh, communicate with each other. Right here, we only use one uh, master, then, uh, then AGV can communicate uh, uh, directly. It's already be uh, theoretical, but just show you the idea. Like uh, we write a program, we write some code, and create a master here. Then they can uh, send a message and receive the message, uh, communicate direct directly. So we don't need to uh, master to communicate with each other. That's one uh, one contribution of this uh, uh, conference conference paper. Then uh, after we design that and we conduct some experiments, and we use uh, two new robots and uh, with ROS to uh, to communicate with each other, and uh, we do some experiment uh, to avoid the collision at the intersection. And uh, basically, uh, here is the primary one. We just use the altimeter, uh, altimeter or the uh, encoder on the wheel to. To compute the, the traveling distance, and uh, then we calculate the position of two AGVs. Okay, and uh, the position of uh, AG, uh, position of AGVs, and just send to the cloud, and uh, the central computer will know where are the uh, AGVs now, and uh, they communicate with each other. So this is a global map of the intersection. Here <coughs> is a global map, like. One uh, one AGV uh, is on the uh, in the in the bottom, and the other one is on the uh, on the left hand side. Okay, and the list two are the local maps for each uh, for global maps. Uh, it's uh, it's for for the persons like for human perception, and uh, for local map is like based on the uh, based on two AGVs. So you see on the uh, left hand side the zero point is um is where the AGV is and uh, on the right hand side you, you can see the origin the zero point is uh, where the second AGV is okay so there are two different uh two different uh map okay for two two AGVs so need, they need to communicate with each other through the global map then they know where where the other is okay so we have path planning and the navigation uh, for for each one. We can go straight and turn right and turn left. So for three for uh, three paths for one um, 
AGV. So three times three is nine. They are totally nine experiments. So uh, due to the limitation of time, uh, just go a little bit uh, faster. Like uh, here is the for the central computer. It's a task for the central computer, the control chart of that. And uh, for the AGV, is uh, the other one is the control flow chart for the AGV, like uh, uh, get the get the um, the assignment and uh, sending the uh, AGV coordinate to the central computer and communicate and check if it's going collide or not. If not collide, it goes go ahead and uh, and uh, then check the if the Task is ending or not? If it's ending, then it stops. All right. So we, uh, so as I say, it's nine scenarios, and for each scenario, we have three tries, and uh, uh, all all works. Okay, all have passed the test, and uh, we also measure the arrows like from the ending point, the, the target point. Okay, then we do some statistical study, but I didn't show you the. Statistical study here, but uh, uh, we can conclude that at least two AGV uh, 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 works and it won't won't collide with each other. And uh, let me, uh, due to the limitation of time, let me just show you the uh, the, uh, <coughs> the the. Can you see the video right now? Yes, professor. Okay, uh, yeah. So let's play. <coughs> That's what we did. Uh, one AGV just come. And the other way also come, then they communicate with each other. Then the the, the other one, oh, there's a AGV, so it just stop, okay, and wait. And the, the other AGV just turn around, okay. After uh, turn around, then the second one uh, start moving. This one is one is turn left, the other one is turn right, okay. Uh, it won't. Uh, it, then the other one just you know, finish the task, just stop there. Okay, that's basically uh, what we did uh, for for this uh, experiment. So as I say, there are nine nine experiments. Okay, uh, right. Uh, go straight, turn right, turn left. Okay. So uh, uh, basically, the this paper shows you like we use the concept of IoT architecture to design AGV system, and we also conduct a, a experiment. Uh, to show like our system works. As I say here, we only use like the uh, wheel encoder to compute the the position of the AGV, and uh, then we have more uh, works like we use like a uh, ultrasonic sensor or whatever sensor to uh, if there is the obstacle, then we can uh, avoid the obstacle. But it's not in uh, this paper. Okay, that's it. Uh, I think I have. Uh, spend all my time. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you me, for your presentation. Let okay. Let me, uh, get, okay. No problem. Uh, yeah. How could, how can I? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, later. Uh, later I, I will read question okay. from for you. Okay. 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 Thank you for your nice presentation and uh, for your video. The video background is quite familiar with me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone want to uh, ask uh, some question for Professor uh, Xiang? Please don't be hesitate to type uh, in uh, at the chat room. Okay. When uh, we are uh, waiting, I have a question, uh, Professor Xiang. What do you yes. think? What is the the uh, the uh, benefit or <clears throat> and the drawback? of uh, using a uh, EOT uh, concept for this uh, collision uh, avoidance using the you say the, using the concept of IoT the yeah. internet of things yeah all right okay i think uh, so we can see from the architecture like uh, for the they are right now they are uh, because we want to apply the smart manu smart manufacturing mm -hmm. and we want to integrate all the things together so we have uh, sensors robot you know agvs so we have this kind of uh, uh, architecture like for each um, for each machine or robot we can use like uh, uh, sensors to collect to collect the information 
then uh, for wireless, uh, for the wireless uh, communication network, we can communicate with each other. And you collect all this, collect all this uh, data. And if you know what you want to do, uh, then you know your application and uh, your purpose. Then you can uh, use all this uh, to, to do some uh, application uh, computation or based on that, you can develop your algorithm to know uh, what you want. Then that's good. I think uh, that's right now the, uh, you know, the idea or the, or the very popular uh, idea or the, or the or the direction of to develop uh you know smart manufacturing smart warehouse or even for the you know travel travelers travelers uh car system okay and, uh, you know maybe in the future nobody drive the car so all the cars just you know move on the underground okay that's the basic idea and uh, that's the benefit of using a uh, iot concept uh, I don't know if I uh, answer the question uh, clear or not. Thank you. Yes, yes, it's uh, answer clear, and uh, I hope and I'm sure that uh, this uh, research will be uh, uh, helpful and uh, can be used for a small medium enterprise. That uh, they are, uh, I think, they are very uh, need this uh, type of uh, technology. Okay. Uh, I think we uh, already uh, run out of our time. Yeah, it's a uh, maybe we we will ask a committee for more uh, time next time. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank, uh, you. thank you, Professor uh, Xiang. Thank Please you. Uh, give applause. You can use a reaction <laughs> and okay. your uh, <laughs> like this one. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor Xiang. Uh, next uh, presenter is uh, Professor Quan Chung Huang. Professor Huang. Yes, uh, let's me. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I would like to share my screen to you. Yeah, yes, I if, can is hear that you possible? And, yeah. Uh, and also you can see your uh yes, uh, yes, I uh, I think so. I use this one. Uh, sorry. Right there. Uh, can you see my screen? Wait a minute. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Yes, uh, right now I need to open my PowerPoint. Yes, can you see my screen right now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I right now. Yes. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, today I would like to uh present my work. Uh, the title of my work is uh, a study of uh, design and uh, development of a cyber physical application, and uh, this is uh this paper is written by me. Uh, my name is Quan Jin Huang, and uh, also the other co-author is uh uh. Uh, Xu Shen uh, Chao. Uh, uh, he is uh, me. I am right now. I'm uh, working in the Department of Industrial and the System Engineering in uh, Zhongyuan University, uh, Taoyuan, Taiwan. And uh, the uh, my co-author is uh, uh, he, uh, he works in uh, Yalong in, uh, Intelligent Equipment Group uh, in uh, China uh, in uh, uh, Zhejiang. Okay. Uh, right now, uh, I would like to say the why we need a virtual system. Huh? Uh, the, of course, the, in the past, the, uh, the production, the products are from, uh, from uh, mass production uh, were the major of the goods. So, but uh, until recently, the, the, uh, the taste from the people uh, started, started changing. changing. Yes, yes. started, started changing. changing. So, uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry, because uh, there is a response. Okay, because uh, uh, so people would like to have more choices uh, uh, for their taste. So that's why the, we need uh, something uh, to respond to the trade of product uh, variety. And uh, the second uh, point is why we need a virtual system is because uh, we need to take advantage of the uh, continuous improvement of the computer technology. As we know, the most of all, the density of uh, IC were doubled uh, almost every two years. This also indicates uh, the power uh, of a computer uh, is uh, increased. So we have we can take advantage of this uh, this improvement. And so and of course and the, the third point is that the, we need to effectively reducing the time and the cost in prototyping, including design and validation. Because uh, before we design a system. I think the most of the time uh, we spend on it is uh, try to develop a physical 
a physical prototype, but uh, with uh, a virtual system can be uh, designed designed uh, first. So, of course, uh, we can uh, reduce the cost. Of course, this is the time and the cost in the uh, uh, the in the prototyping. This is very important. And later on, if you want to modify it, uh, it will uh, it will be more easier uh, for the people or for the engineer or even the technician. Uh, to find out the the the, uh, the problem or the causes of some some unexpected uh, uh, results, and the fourth is the for effectively reducing the time uh, the cost in commission and maintenance. Of course, with a, a virtual system, sometimes in the in the field, I mean in, in the practical world, it is difficult to find a, a, a problem very, very quickly, especially for troubleshooting when you have uh, some something wrong in the in a, a big factory. But uh, with a virtual system, at least uh, before you go to the, the the field to find out a problem, at least you, you can have some indication because you can run the virtual system and uh, to to see, uh, to find possible, uh, poss uh, possible uh, causes. Uh, this is important. And uh, of course, this is, can prevent uh, the, the unnecessary risk for the pers personnel who employ the, uh, the traditional method to look for the, the problem. I think that uh, most of the engineer or technician know that if there is something wrong uh, with uh, in the field, no, more, uh, normally they just go to uh, the places uh, with the problem and they, they try to try and error. But sometimes the, the causes of the problem is not there. So, it will take a lot of time uh, to to uh, to identify or recognize the the causes. So with a virtual system, uh, you can try different way uh, to try the, the different uh, method to try to find out the, the problems. Of course, the for the sales point of view, and you can have a better presentation. For example, you can show your clients that okay, uh, the the uh, the final phase of your design, and uh, give the the your clients or your potential or potential prospect, uh, prospects that okay there is a your system will look like this and uh, why it can be done uh, why you can do so it, ha it has a better presentation okay, we can go to the next slide okay and uh, of course if you're talking about the technology that they need to integrate in a virtual system actually there's a lot for example the first is a mechanical uh, subsystem electrical subsystem, a control sub software, and a lot of things. So we are not talking about a simple animation. We are talking about a really physical property. How to integrate all these kind of things uh, into a virtual system? It's, it's a difficult. Uh, before, the, uh, of course, in uh, now on the market, uh, most of the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the software is only doing the animation. It didn't really integrate the physical uh, physical property of the, for example, mechanical uh, electro electronics or even electrotechnical property into the virtual system. But uh, right now we try to use uh, uh, different kind of platforms uh, to, to build up a virtual system. And uh, this is a structure of the design and development of a cyber physical application. Actually, right now uh, in this paper, we only Present this one or the first one, uh, because uh, there is later on, uh, there is uh, still more uh, development. Like uh, talked with uh, with uh, other uh, hardware system, but in this paper we only talking about virtual system, uh, system not really talking about uh, the the uh, the physical talking with uh, communicating with a physical device, and uh, you can see that. Uh, in this, uh, in this virtual system, in this paper, we use a pneumatics and uh, electrotechnic, also the, the control uh, unit, uh, and it, like uh, for example, later diagram, and uh, we should try to build uh, a lot of things. And also in this uh, paper, we also use the 3D uh, objects. Uh, we are not talking about 2D, I, we're talking about 3D. And uh, in this paper, we use uh, two things, the first, uh, in the virtual, uh, in the uh, 3D presentation, we use unit 3D. We try to uh, build uh, up uh, the virtual system in, in unit 3D. Uh, unit 3D. This is a uh, very popular. This, actually, this is a game engine. 
and uh, everything with uh, its own official system like uh, size and uh, even you can imitate the, the the gravity or the texture of an object oh. and uh, the other side for example the the other side like uh, uh, the control system I mean the for example like uh, for example in this one we use the uh, farming technology we call it automation studio uh, this is the, the one that we build up uh, the the detail schematics. For example, in this one, uh, we use uh, like an uh, excavator, and uh, there is a hydraulic inside. And uh, here, uh, sorry, in, in here, we can see there is a there is a uh, uh, the the uh, this is called uh, mechanics uh, structure. But uh, and uh, but you can use a. Uh, it can employ the different kind of technology, not only limited by hydraulic. It also can uh, include in uh, 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 pneumatic and uh, other technology. So we try to right now. Uh, so uh, right now we we try to build or build up the these two the virtual system. Uh, use a bridge. Uh, we call it a three unity three D link interface. So. Of course, with these links, uh, we build up the first. Uh, we build up uh, the uh, the system inside Unity 3D, and then we strictly define that there is a the there is a, a rules to define the a list of variable. The ones that we binding using these uh, interface, so these uh, uh, variables can be found uh, can be found in the automation steel side. So then through this. Uh, mechanism um, like uh, the list uh, variables uh, and uh, we can communicate with each other. So there is a, actually uh, this uh, virtual system is like this. So we use a production line. So uh, later, on, later on, we will, I will run the, uh, uh, a video or even uh, I will run the, because right now I have a software in my computer. I can run it for you. So you can have a close look. So this is a, uh, 3D uh, uh, unity side. So we build up uh, a production line. And then there is a, you can see there is a conveyor and there is a pusher because you need to change the, the, the boxes and the direction and the, their receiver, uh, their receiver. And uh, in the control schematic side, uh, we use, a, uh, this is not a difficult one. We use a, a, a virtual PLC. Uh, this is uh, Siemens. Uh, I think it's a S7, uh, one, one, 200, uh, 100. Uh. So, and of course there is a, like, uh, for example, there is a, a electronic uh, device. Uh, this is, uh, for example, there's a sensor, uh, there's a power line inside, and uh, there's, there is a, a, like a solenoid. Uh, and this is a laser diagram. So this, uh, and this is a top view, a uh, top view. So as you can see from the, the, the one you can see there is a one conveyor long conveyor there's a pusher and there are another long conveyor and there are short conveyor so it, from top view you can see it's like this oh, this one this pusher so the, we just say okay in either both side you can see the result or the result and you build up this one and of course there is a some technology behind uh, we just show this one so so this is virtual PLC and this is electrical control, and this is a process control. This is a, a CAD or like, and this is HMI because they, you can uh, create a human machine interface uh, like a control panel, uh, control panel. And this is a short video so you can see. So in the beginning, uh, you can see from here. So this one, uh, this one. So we start to run. Uh, this one, you push one, this, this one will, be, will start, and then you start the simulate. So right now there is a couple of things. So you can control the top view, side view, and even the, the uh, this is the, the, uh, the I save a view from this, uh, this view, it's, it's much uh, better present. So right now there is a communicator. So right now we start pushing we in, uh, activated the PLC. So you can see, once it activated, this one means that this already, uh, this one is already uh, start, it's start running. Uh, so, because sometimes it, it is small, so you can, uh, okay, I push this button, there's a box drop down. So because, uh, because of what? Because you can see 
there is a right now there is a this is the conveyor so it it already said okay this is the conveyor is is, a, is activated so the box will move to this direction and then you can see there is a sub cup of sensor here this is a sensor so you can see because of why because of why this one this pusher will be activated because it touched the sensor so you will move so you can see okay here pusher so they indicate on the last one so it dropped now and okay i drop another one so you can see okay the sensor and the data i will drop a couple of them so you can see okay the drop another one and the drop two if it is stocks it stops oh there's a there's stocks so you can see sometimes it's not moving uh smoothly it is because because of what it is not the only animation there are some the, the the each box has its own uh physical property sometimes it was stocks it was stocks so right now these two side is communicated with each other so for example right now i stop this one so it stop moving so when i release when i release the emergency button or look at look at that because there is something wrong oh, there is something wrong what i say is that sometimes you think that the schematic we design or the the control mechanism we design it is a uh, it is okay but actually it is, it is not okay because uh, like uh, this one because it, once you push the emergency button these uh, the, the box stop somewhere and then once you release the 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 emergency button you should has a reinitialize a process but the, we didn't do that so from this virtual system you can say okay there is something wrong. You need to modify your control uh, control uh, process. Uh, so yes, so so uh, in this finding, uh, uh, we also say okay the the construction of a three D virtual system uh, it's uh, is a doable and uh, it uh, and uh, we design uh, this system so it can have uh, in the uh, it can imitate uh, the practice response from the real system. And uh, also the, the unit environment, it, is, uh, it can be expanded. Uh, in here, uh, we, I didn't show you, but uh, like with the 3D, uh, unit 3D system, it can be, it can be aided more the conveyor very easily, uh, very easily. Uh, because it, uh, if you dig more into the uh, Unity 3D, actually there's a, a lot of pos uh, possibilities. Uh, and uh, also the, the final one is a different uh, failure scenario can be uh, implemented in virtual system. Actually, uh, in this uh, automation studio, there is a troubleshooting for each environment. For example, in this side, each component, uh, each component can have a troubleshooting. Okay, uh, trouble. You can uh, uh, make it fail. Uh, on purposely, uh, on purpose. So you can see, okay, what's your res response for either this uh, this is 3D side or this is schematic side. So there's a lot of public uh, application. So you can either training your personnel or you can say, okay, you're going to test the robot, uh, rob uh, robotness of your system. Uh, it is possible, uh, it is possible. Okay. Sorry. And uh, uh, the uh, further research is that, okay, I will mod uh, modeling an uh, existing uh, manufacturing system on uh, other, uh, because this is a very simple production line, I will make it more complicated. And uh, also that uh, I want to use the OPC, uh, the protocol OPC, and then to really communicate with uh, physical, like a, a PLC or other, uh, like industrial uh, PC or other uh, physical device. And also that uh, I want to use uh, this uh, virtual system uh, as a base of uh, acquire different response from different location in the system. Uh, this information can be uh, form a database uh, for developing a failure uh, detection system, uh, failure detection system with the implementation of certain AI algorithm. Uh, this is uh, uh, virtual uh, research. Okay. Yes. Uh, so this is conclude uh, my presentation today. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, yes. Thank you, Professor uh, Wang, from, for your uh, nice uh, presentation and quite uh, significant for our condition today. 
about a virtual uh, system. Okay, any uh, questions? Okay, you can type in the chat or maybe you just can raise your hand and ask a question for uh, Professor Huang. Yes. Anyone? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, if uh, no one uh, ready for uh, ask question, maybe I have a question, uh, Professor Huang. Uh, yes. Uh, like uh, you said before, that uh, there are uh, many uh, failure uh, scenarios, and uh, I think uh, this one is quite uh, significant for uh, the, con the real condition, because for uh, uh, at the setup time there is still uh, many uh, failure uh, we can uh, find there. Okay, and uh, for your uh, next uh, research, okay, uh, how uh, you uh, cope with it is uh, many kind of uh, failure, many kind of uh, condition of failures for your uh, uh, systems. Yes, and uh, actually, the can I can I uh, have a screen again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Here. Uh, yes. Sure. Actually, uh, if you can see that this is the this is the uh, actually I run uh, from this uh, uh, the project in my comp on my computer right now. So you can see here from this side and it is very easy. I can just run it and I start it and you can see and I drop one from here. Okay. And actually, how about we'll drop two? If, if I, I stop it and then failure system, I can I drop another one. Mm. And then Look at that, this one is stuck here. So if there is a something wrong, look at that, it is not working right now. So you can find out the, 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 the failure, possible cause of failure here. And also the other thing is that, and right now I didn't activate it, but in each, for example, in each one, each one, well, this one is not that there is a, there, and the, I think there is a, some failure system, for example, uh, this one is a more complicated. For example, I, I show you. For example, if there is a one, like a, for example, like a, this uh, this a cylinder, uh, mm -hmm. you can imitate it. And there is a, always a, like a troubleshooting here, and you can try to uh, try to make it uh, make it fail in with uh, some courses. So you will you will cause the the whole system mm -hmm. whole system fail. So if from here, then you can you can try to uh, Increase uh, the robustness of your system. But uh, here, there, this uh, this virtual system is uh, the first prototype. I didn't put too much effort into it, but this is the the further uh, research I would like to incorporate in my next uh, next uh, phase. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Great. Uh, interesting, uh, Professor Wang. Okay. Uh, we want to. Uh, Continue um, with some question, but again, time is our limitation. So therefore, uh, we can uh, stop for this uh, track and let's uh, give uh, applause for uh, Professor Wang. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now. Uh, can we continue for the next track? Okay, we will uh, continue for uh, the next track. The next track is a supply chain uh, management track and we have uh, three uh, presenter here. First is uh, Fritandi. Are you here? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you, thank you. And thank you. second, uh, Presenter is Samuel, uh, Samuel Sunya Reong Kiel. So, sorry if I have oh. wrong uh, pronunciation. Are you here? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me, uh, okay. Professor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a little bit of feedback. Uh, somewhere. Oh. Maybe you can check. Okay. And then uh, the last uh, presenter for uh, supply chain uh, management track is uh, Henry Cahaya Aprilianto. Yes. Are you here? Yes, I'm here, Dr. Gede. Okay. Now we start uh, with uh, first uh, presenter, 
uh, Vitandi with a topic the application of U-shape line balancing at a future man furni furniture manufacturing. Okay, uh, time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gede. Let me share my screen first. And can you see my screen? Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the opportunities. I will present the paper titled The Application of UCF Line Balancing at Furniture Manufacturing. My name is Fritandi as the first author, Raihi Nisa Maini Haryanto as the second, David Trilbutra as third, and Anglin Sugiatna as the fourth author. In the manufacturing industry, which has several operation line, operators transfer from one line to another line is a common occurrence. One of the cause of the transfer is the other production line that require additional operator as the order due date approach. And this research was applied research in furniture manufacturing in Indonesia, a make to order industry that focused on steel frame folding chair and performing operator transfer activity on the production line. The company faced the problem that the production line wasn't achieved because of an imprecise number of operators arrangement and test assignment. Imprecise arrangement of operator was affected by operator transfer from one line to another line with the influence of the operator absence that caused the company's inability to meet production target. The imprecise test arrangement could be seen from the existence of idle workstation. And the condition of the company's production floor supports the balancing of the UCIP production line because the layout of the production line was already UCIP, even though the division of tests and flow took place in a straight line. Therefore, this research used UCIP line balancing to increase line efficiency to ensure the production targets were achieved. And this research with data collection began with the data collection, which were obtained from direct observation on the actual manufacturing production line and also from company's document. And the next step was testing for normality, uniformity, and adequacy that were performed using IBM SPSS Statistic 21 with data confidence level of 95%. And all these tests were used so that the data Use were normally distributed out of extreme values and had sufficient amount to process in the further data processing. And the next step was the calculation of cycle time and normal time to determine standard time calculation. And the next step was the calculation of actual line efficiency, which measure the work productivity of assembly line and utilization percentage to measure the proportion of operator work and operator efficiency at its workstation. And the next step was the calculation of actual line efficiency to see actual effectiveness of a line and to compare the effectiveness of the proposed line and continue with the cycle time calculation as a limit in the test assignment and the ability of the production line to achieve production target. And then next was U-shape line balancing and calculated line efficiency. Balancing with the U-shape pack provides a larger possibilities of a test assignment than a straight line balancing. And the last step was to calculate the proposed production capacity and line efficiency. The effect of the number of operators will be seen for its effect on production capacity and line efficiency. And the division of operator tests in the actual production line could be seen in this figure. And this is the precedence diagram for the product assembly process. And the furniture manufacturing had a total production target of 65,435. 455 units for 12 weeks, but based on the theoretical calculation, the production line had the efficiency of 59.71% with 15 operators and a production target of 82,297 units in 12 weeks without operator transfer of or absence. The production line could meet the target demand because the maximum cycle time that occurred after paralleling in the production area was 16.29 seconds below the required cycle time of 20.48 seconds. The unachieved production target is influenced by the number of operators being transferred to other production line or not being present. And in the process, operators often move to another production line or operators were not present. And this was known from the work plans and daily works data in the company. And scenario were made to prove the effect of the operator's reduction on actual production capacity. And from the data, it was known that one to three operators were absent per day. Based on, the, based on this data, 10 scanners were made. And the scanners could occur supported by the operator's ability to operate all machines and all operations due to the training received beforehand. The assumption used in this section was that the initial total operator required was 15 operators. The reduction of workers is influential throughout the period, or 12 weeks, and the reduction of workers were 
was only carry out uh, the work session that have more than one operators. And from the 10 scenarios that have been made, it could be seen that eight of the 10 scenarios of operator shifting to another production line and the absence of the operator could make the production line that should be able to achieve this production target unable to achieve this production target. The effect of the number of operators was very significant and must be designed properly. And one way to improve one efficiency and control the number of operators is to balance the production line. And the U-shape line balancing was carried out to obtain the possibility of higher line efficiency due to the combination of more loading and more flexibility than the traditional production line balancing. The higher number of combinations due to loading could be done by looking at it from two directions, operations that are free from previous operation and operations that don't have a successor operation. And in this research, heuristic methods were used to balance the U-shape production line, including the maximum rank positional weight, maximum total number of follower tests, minimum number of follower tests, maximum test time, and minimum test time. And it could be seen that each method could reduce the number of operators by five operators and increase line efficiency. But the best results are found in the maximum rank positional weight method with line efficiency reaching 84.08% and capacity production per period reach 76,688 units in 12 weeks. In this method, operation 8 and operation 9 and operation 10 are combined using a workbench and combining operation 2 with a reverse setter matching with inspection using a workbench. And the effect of the balancing load on work section 3 is reducing the percentage of use of the reverse setter machine in operation 2 because the operating time of the work session 3 is 17.48 seconds, consisting of 5.8 seconds operation. Since workstation 3 is a bottleneck in the production line, it can be concluded that the use of the reverse shattering machine in operation 2 is only 33.2%. In addition, there was a reduction of capacity in 12 weeks from 82,297 82, units in 12 weeks to 76,688 units in 12 weeks, or a decrease of 6.82%. However, the reduction in the percentage of machine usage to 33.2% and the reduction in the production capacity of 6.82% could be covered by the reduction of five operators and a 24.37% increase in line efficiency from the actual system. In addition, re reducing production capacity is not a problem because production capacity was still above the production target. And for the conclusion, the user production line balancing could meet the target demand, improve line efficiency, reduce the longest processing time, and at the same time could reduce the number of operators. In this application research, the actual production line could theoretically meet the demand target. The operator transfer to another production line and absence affected the production line ability to meet the demand target. And in reducing the possibility of operator absence, balancing the use type of production line was carried out. And it was known that the number of operators need to meet the production target is 10 operator with a production capacity of 76,688 units in 12 weeks. And the balancing of the use of production line was carried out to increase the line efficiency from 59.71% to 84.08%. And for the, first, for the further research, uh, should be considered about the scenario of using the proposed number of operators based on the needs of the operators in other production line and the possibility of unaffordable operator absence so that the company could employ more than 10 operators. Five operators are deducted from the actual system. If the operator is transferred, gets a job in another, in another production line and not be unemployed. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you uh, very much for a uh, nice presentation of Ritandi. And it's quite uh, interesting because uh, furniture manufacturing is uh, one of quite complex uh, process and uh, need uh, line balancing quite uh, detail. Okay, okay. anyone uh, have a question for uh, Ritandi? I check. Uh, Chat first. Uh, <clears throat> not yet. Okay. Hello. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. 
Mr. Santoso has a question. Okay. 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 Sorry. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Good day. Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, my name is uh, Santoso. Uh, I'm from uh, Department of Industrial Engineering and System, ITS. Okay, I want, I want to ask you a simple question, Mr. Fritandi. Okay, uh, what is the limitation or maybe a disadvantage of the application of U-shape uh, if it is compared with a straight line yeah, or conventional model? Can you explain, uh, could you explain to us about it? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question, Mr. Santoso. Uh, maybe the first and the most limitation of the Yulen balancing is the workforce. When we want to uh, propose the Yulen balancing, we have to ensure that the workforce, workforce have a multi skill in another machine so that they could operate another test and another machine. And that is the first and the most uh, limitation in a U-shape type of line balancing. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Fritandi. Uh, but I think uh, I have a little suggestion for you. Uh, you must uh, write uh, that uh, sentences uh, into your presentation or your paper, maybe. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Gede, for the opportunity for me. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Santoso. You have helped me very much. Okay. <laughs> okay, any other uh, questions? Okay, maybe I have a question, uh, Mr. Pritandi. Uh, in the uh, furniture manufacturer, uh, mostly not only one product in the production line. Okay. Uh, how uh, your uh, model can uh, deal with this uh, condition that maybe there are two, three, or maybe four to uh, five uh, products at the same time in this uh, production line. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Gide. Um, actually, in this uh, assembly line, it, ha it has uh, two products that, that differ in a specification, but the process of the assembly is a similar thing with a uh, same cycle time. So I can conclude that it could be uh, balanced in the same way, but for the multiple products, I think it needs uh, further research. And, and of course, uh, it needs another consideration of a cycle time from the other products. Maybe that's the answer. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you uh, very much. Therefore, for the next uh, research with uh, multiple products will be uh, very uh, interesting. Okay, uh, any more uh, questions? Okay, if uh, no question, now uh, we will uh, go to the uh, next presentation. But Let's uh, give uh, applause for uh, Mr. Uh, Fritandi. Thank you, Mr. Fritandi. Okay, the next uh, presenter is uh, Samuel uh, Sinha with the topic a short note for machine, uh, machine uh, cold chain uh, network uh, models. Okay, uh, time is uh, yours, Mr. Samuel. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me from, uh, yeah, from clearly. my presentation? Okay, thank you. Uh, sh shall I share my screen as well or, or use the uh, one up here? It's uh, okay, you can share your okay, screen. Okay, I'll share my screen. Uh, one moment. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm Samuel Rong. Uh, student at uh, Zhongyuan Christian University, and uh, I am the author of this, um, this study, uh, and uh, co-authors uh, Professor Xiao, Professor Huang from uh, Zhongyuan Christian University, and uh, also uh, 
uh, under advisement of uh, Professor Wang from the uh, Changzhou uh, College of Information Technology in China. So um, my main study right now is um, based on a vaccine cold chain network models. And uh, to begin the research, um, we, be, uh, we start by asking some questions. And uh, mainly it's about uh, the state of vaccine production and distribution, because the topic of uh, our conference is about um, industry in, in light of COVID. So how uh, are vaccines produced and distributed in a situation with shortages? Uh, what are the best ways to optimize them? And so to, to answer these questions, um, uh, here are some, some more uh, uh, details on, on the, the research questions. Um, I wanted to see uh, the current situation of uh, the literature, but instead of only doing a, a survey of all the most cited uh, literature reviews, I wanted to investigate um, using a method that was uh, proposed by um, Aria, uh, who, Aria et al, who produced uh, this software called uh, the Bibliometrics software. And what it does is that um, it looks at the metadata in databases and analyzes uh, the citations used by the sources. So instead of uh, only analyzing from the base source count, it looks at what the authors source and what uh, publications they cite as well. And um, some of the some of the conclusions will be shared in this presentation. So this is the method used. Uh, it's uh, bibliographic coupling and co-citation. Uh, so the main paper, so each each uh, node in the in the research would be the page uh, paper three. And two methods were used: um, the bibliographic coupling, which is uh, the sources that cite uh, a main paper, the count was uh, counted. And so the more uh, bibliographic coupling there was for any specific source, the higher the score. And also co-citation, what do the sources cite uh, in common? Um, so both uh, looking forward and looking backwards in time. And this was the methodology uh, of my uh, literature review. I looked at the list of the WHO approved vaccines and it's updated to the vaccines in 2022. Also, the correct terms for a vaccine cold chain by Matthias in 2007 and uh, the terms for COVID-19. And uh, these are the search terms that were used for the two databases. The databases were the Dimensions database and the Web of Science database. The Dimensions database was um, suggested by uh, Kosha et al um, from an MIT study. And the web of science is a traditional, uh, a traditionally accepted uh, list of uh, journals. So I wanted to see the difference between those. And this was what I found. It was found that the first uh, vaccine supply chain that was uh, initiated was the polio vaccine. And it was very successful, but it uh, depended on a very specific system. And that was the cold chain system you see through its success that uh, it nearly eradicated polio. And then they made these following goals as well. Uh, but uh, in the past, uh, conventional methods were not um, able to be compared to current uh, methods. And, and what we have today uh, are known as uh, modeling methods, of which uh, there are three methods. Um, the mathematical programming method, which searches for a global solution and is the most uh, uh, computationally taxing heuristic methods which uh, seek the most the, the current best solution and the analytical methods which use uh, multi-objective programming. In cold chain and the ultra cold chain I also found that uh, there were three main classes of vaccines that were studied in a supply chain. Uh, the ultra low temperature which is um, uh, a point of very uh, major concern now, the frozen tier and then the refrigerated tier. And all these tiers are also used for um, the COVID-19 vaccines. It was also noted that there was only one precedent for the, uh, for the ultra low frozen temperatures for 
COVID-19. And those were the Ebola vaccines, uh, mainly uh, focused on in studies in Africa and Tanzania as case studies. These are the main vaccine types that, uh, that were introduced uh, for COVID-19. Uh, at first, um, there were the uh, mRNA viral vector and inactivated uh, vaccines. And most recently in 2022, the protein vaccines also became introduced. Out of all of these, the mRNA vaccines require uh, deep freezing. So that's the ultra cold chain uh, requirements that were, uh, that were uh, made by these manufacturers. We also looked at the lead time for the mRNA vaccines. Um, there were, for example, for um, the Pfizer, uh, the Pfizer uh, vaccines, there would be a significant amount of lead time due to the requirement of uh, different uh, materials to be shipped in. And it, it was, it ended up being quite long. <clears throat> It was, it was found that the total lead time uh, was uh, about 110 days, which explains the current shortages that we have. Also in terms of delivery, there, there were some quite stringent requirements and this information uh, that I found was cited quite often uh, led to the, included the requirement of freezers and also uh, dry ice or uh, equivalent or cold chain containers for the endpoint delivery systems. There are many different points to be optimized in such a supply chain, which is uh, noted as one of the slowest supply chains, the vaccine supply chain, in terms of both uh, manufacturing and distribution. Uh, when optimizing for such a system, we look at the data management requirements, and these were the World Health Organization advised uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccine supply chain data requirements, uh, points for optimization that need to be taken into account uh, when uh, designing a system for COVID-19 vaccines supply chains, uh, storage capacity, uh, both uh, current and future forecasts, uh, how well the cold chain can perform with its uh, 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 equipment infrastructure. And uh, a major point is the supply chain. How timely can the deliveries be? And uh, how can they be made uh, without causing shortages and without oversupply as well? Because oversupply leads to uh, wastages in a situation where there are already shortages. And lastly, how to uh, care for reverse logistics in terms of tracking materials and uh, consistent data collection. There was also another study that looked at the points of uncertainty in, uh, in a supply chain because uh, in a perfect world, there would be deterministic situations, but uh, as we all know, the, the models uh, most uh, effectively uh, would have to account for stochastic situations. And this was uh, one often cited paper um, by Lemons in 2016. Uh, looking at uh, both the strategic, operational, and uh, supply and demand aspects. Um, in terms of uh, demand, uh, there would also have to look at um, the both uh, at each node, at each point, and how demand might shift uh, from one place to another. Uh, meaning that uh, if one if one service point uh, did not service all the all the patients, then the system would also have to account for uh, other nodes to uh, to uh, take that shifted demand as well. Um, operational uh, uncertainty: the trucks that might not travel um, in the scheduled time, or processing and deliveries that uh, might not occur in a perfect situation. How can the system account for that? Um, and so uh, this was the structure of the delivery networks uh, that, that were the most relevant, a hub and spoke design that reduced uh, the NP hardness of, of the network. And also two main, uh, two main systems of the vaccine uh, manufacturing and distribution chain. Normally optimization is 
done separately because the vaccines would be imported into the country. So manufacturing and distribution. Uh, another observation was found that these delivery networks were being consolidated. These are hub and spoke systems. And although uh, the shipments uh, would require less processing, this does not mean that the linear direct is necessarily better because uh, they also uh, introduce problems of constriction uh, at each node, especially at the central nodes uh, before reaching the endpoint. So how can optimization be done around that? And that is another research question. So the conclusion to, uh, to what uh, this survey covered was that um, uh, mRNA was very uh, uh, taxi in terms of manufacturing. Distribution was based on a hub and spoke system uh, with a trend for linear direct networks. Um, and with uh, additional nodes, there's increased chances of errors, but with fewer nodes, there's an increased chance of constriction. Goals for uh, higher scalability to make uh, these networks larger in the future. And uh, the distribution goals in, in general would be for quicker and more robust uh, distribution networks. And um, that was my uh, presentation. Thank you so much for your time. <clears throat> Okay, okay, so thank you so much, Mr. Samuel. So Dr. Gede, now we already have Dr. Reshma in this breakout room. Dr. Reshma, can you hear good my morning. voice? Yeah, good morning, good morning. Sorry for the delay. Okay. Thank you so, for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay, so Dr. Resma, now we are in the question and answer sessions and along with a Dr. Gede, Gede Agus as the session chair, so both of you can give feedback, comments to the presenters, yeah, because your feedback is really matters to all of us in uh, making improvement, yeah, in the paper. So this time is for the session chair, Dr. Esma and Dr. Gede Agus. Now the time is yours. Okay, please. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you uh, so much. Any uh, questions for uh, participants for uh, Samuel? Okay, or maybe uh, from uh, Dr. Reshma? Yes. Uh, Samuel, can you, yes. I'm audible. Can you say about the delivery networks which you have used for our work? Uh, could, could you repeat that question, please? Can you able to say me about the delivery networks which you had used for your work? Yes, um, currently uh, I'm looking into um, different uh, heuristic uh, methods. The next step, of course, is to adapt uh, an appropriate heuristic. I'm looking at uh, modifications for uh, particle swarm optimization techniques. And okay. um, you're planning to choose particle swarm optimization? Yes. So, uh, what made you to choose that uh, particle swarm optimization for your work? Yes, uh, the main reason for that is that uh, uh, there has been precedent for uh, these optimization techniques in the past. Uh, and um, the point of uh, these algorithms is that they search for um, uh, the best solution so far, which is very important in such a slow uh, system as a vaccine distribution chain, uh, especially with uh, so many uh, members, it becomes uh, mathematically infeasible to use something like that uh, uh, integer uh, uh, programming or mixed integer programming solution uh, since uh, that would take too many resources. So the next uh, best thing would be to use uh, a heuristic to optimize around that. Okay, because there are, we are having many optimization techniques in this particular field. So we can try other uh, methods also. So we can do have some literature survey on this by choosing for choosing this optimization techniques. Okay, all the best. Thank you very much. Okay, any other uh, question for from participants? Okay, uh, maybe uh, from uh, me, uh, Samuel. Uh, 
what kind of a uh, network available for uh, this uh, uh, network because uh, it's quite uh, unique because uh, you need to uh, distribute at a short time with a bulk size, but later uh, maybe you don't need to uh, have uh, the same uh, network. It is a uh, is it a uh, use like a uh, available network or we need to uh, develop a new uh, model or a new kind of uh, distribution or network uh, model. What do you think? Yes, so thank you very much for your question. And it's very relevant because uh, recently I was watching um, a conference on um, the, the manufacturers uh, who, were, who were talking about that exact issue. Um, it, it would take resources, of course, to, to build a network and um, it, for the manufacturers, especially, uh, they would have to decide that it would be profitable to make the network in the first place. So uh, one of the solutions is to separate uh, manufacturing and distribution into different networks and then focus on the distribution for the countries that import them uh, into, their, into their own um, nations. And then after that point, it becomes uh, a uh, question of optimizing around distribution, um, what uh, local hospitals and other centers can be used as nodes in, in the network. And, uh, and, and that is an ongoing point of research. Okay, thank you for your uh, answer. Okay, if uh, no one has um, more question, thank you. Uh, uh, Samuel, for your uh, nice uh, presentation, and let's uh, give uh, applause to Sam. Okay, uh, next uh, I pass to uh, Dr. Resma to lead uh, this uh, session. Please, Dr. Resma. Uh, sure, sure, sir. Thank you so much. So let's call upon the next uh, participant. Now that is Henry. The topic is analysis of the factors affecting the palm oil industry supply chain with consideration of circular economy. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Resma. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, can I share my PC? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, can please start your presentation. Can you see my PPT? Yes, your screen is visible. Uh, good morning, Dr. Dr. Resma. Good morning, Dr. Kate. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really pleased uh, to be your speaker in the team conference. Uh, for this section, uh, I would like to present my research and title uh, analysis of the factor affecting the palm oil industry supply chain with consideration of the circular economy. Uh, there are two contributors uh, to this paper, me as the Henry Chai Atrilianto and then uh, Professor Sinra. We are we are from the Department of Industrial and System Engineering, Jung Yuan Christian University, Taiwan. And also actually I'm from Indonesia, from the Department of uh, Agro-Industrial Technology, Faculty of Agriculture Technology, uh, University of Brawijaya, Indonesia. Okay, before I discuss uh, in this paper, uh, I want to share the overview first. I want to share the introduction and then the objective of the study. Uh, research methodology, finding and discussions and the conclusion. Okay, uh, there are several problems as a reason why I conduct this 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 research. The first, uh, we as known, the Indonesia is the one of the uh, large producer to palm oil in the world, uh, around uh, 50, 57 percent. Uh, of the world demand supply from from the Indonesia. So uh, the contributes the contributes uh, 
around uh, 14 percent to Indonesia gross uh, domestic product and then 41 percent the welfare of the Indonesia people uh, and the area uh, which uh, around uh, 15 point oh eight million hectare and produ and producing uh, 49 million tons palm oil i think uh, the palm oil is become the essential commodity for indonesia Cur currently uh, as as we know in indonesia there are there are national issue for the palm oil because the price of the palm oil increased uh, almost uh, 100 percent uh, before uh, the the press of uh, palm oil before the uh, one uh, one one uh, 12 12 12 12000 12, rupiah and now to the 24000 uh, rupiah so the palm oil is very essential from for indonesia and in in my opinion the palm oil uh, as the uh, political uh, commod commodity for, for Indonesia. So, uh, besides that, uh, the, there are the effect of the industry of palm oil. The industry of palm oil will regenerate the, the waste. It, it is the estimate that the production of the palm oil of the solid waste in 2020 generate uh, 2 million tons of muscar fiber. Muscar fiber is one of the uh, waste from the palm oil. And then 9 million tons of seals and 31 million tons of the FD punch. Uh, there are uh, several uh, supply chain actors in, in palm oil. First, uh, first uh, a farmer and then a group farmer and the distributor and then uh, industry. Uh, the palm oil supply chain is very, is, is very complex. I think every uh, actor every echelon in the supply chain will be generated uh, the waste. So, uh, such as the MPT shield waste and MPT palm oil plus waste and the palm oil mills fluence or POMA. POMA is the liquid liquid waste. The this is uh, the problem because there are many waste generated by by palm oil industry. Uh, the industry must be. Uh, uh, must be adapting cost to reduce the palm oil, but I think to overcome this this problem, the uh, Indonesia must be able to uh, to implement the sustainable supply chain with the circular uh, circular economic concept in the palm oil industry. If we want, if the palm oil, if the circular economy concept apply, I think it's it it is can be uh, reduced the waste and can get the more benefits such as the more benefit for for the palm oil industry because the the product from waste can be uh sell and then the other side the the, the circular economy uh, can support the indonesian government uh, target of the national target uh, 23 percent renewable generation by uh, 2025. So this is the objective uh, to identify the related profiling actor that uh, affect application of the circular economy in Indonesia palm oil industry. And then this is the methodology for this research. I use the interpretative structural models to analyze factor that promote the adoption of the circular economy in the palm oil industry. Uh, the study invites five experts to give the opinions in include academics uh, and one the government official and two the palm oil industry practitioner. In the study, uh, three there are three group factors their element uh, are identified from the literature. So this is the step uh, of the ISM first, I identified the variable related to, about the problem, and then the expertise will be fulfilled. The, the questionnaire will input the facts. So, and then after uh, uh, after the get the facts number, I uh, convert to the uh, this metric, this disability metric. Uh, 
I think this is the problem in palm oil industry and circular economy. So we, in this picture, we know this is the uh, red rectangle. Red rectangle is the main chain. So and this is uh, in the behind, in the below. Th this is the blue uh, blue chain. Blue chain is the west west chain. Uh, with chain, this is the uh, the chain of the waste. Uh, we have uh, we get the we get the waste from the palm 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 oil factory. There are uh, PMO and then empty fresh uh, empty fresh brush and the palm cell waste. The PMO actually it can be processing as the biomass and the and then this biomass can processing to be electricity and also electricity is very useful for the palm oil industry to to use to uh, production activity or to sell to the other to to, to the other company the, the the problem is the main chain the main chain will be generated waste if not processing uh, that will be affected uh, environmental quality quality it can be reduced the water quality air quality and soil quality so if we apply if we apply the circular economic concept the waste waste problem can be reduced and support the government policy to uh, renewable energy program in 2025 and then the company or the the actor of the supply chain uh, palm oil uh, will get the new revenue from the waste management and re reduce the cost production. So, I think for uh, from this circular economic concept, we need to who is the involved uh, in the circular economic concept of oil industry, and then we need to know what is the problem uh, are happening, and then what. We must know what what is the objective for the uh, circular economic concept in the palm oil uh, supply chain. So, uh, based on the problem, so I try to uh, spread there are three group. This is the objective of the circular economy, and the participator participator is is the is the like the economist, pharma, manufacturer, customer, etc. And then the problem, uh, there are this is the problem. Uh, every group has the uh, every, every group has the each element. So uh, this is the objective group for the uh, circular economic concept. So uh, after I get the factor number, I create the risk-ability metric for the objective group. So uh, I need to uh, I need to revise this this number. Use tran uh, use transit transitivity rules, and uh, this this is the A one A A I. This is the A J. The, in, in, in ESM, AI to AJ is described the strength of the variable E in influence the variable J, or we can say the driving power. And AJ and to AI describe how how to strongly variable J in is influenced by the variable uh, variable E. We can say the dependence power. So after I get the regress metric, so uh, I I create the driving power and dependency diagram of the objective element. We now uh, from this 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 uh, this figure, the all uh, the alpha the all element uh, the located in the linkage variable. Uh, it's mean the quarter T is a linkage variable with the higher driving power and higher uh, dependency. The element with the lower dependence must be analyzed future because their change will be influenced uh, other element. If one of the, the element will be changed, the, uh, the element will be influenced the other, the other element. 
okay uh, based on this this figure i i i create the esm based model for the objective element so uh, this one the a5 a5 uh, become the uh, k factor a5 be become the k factor and a4 uh, become the uh, if a4 become the final goal a4 is the benefit benefit of the benefit of the circular economy so this is the participator groups after i i get the faxo faxo number i i i convert to the risk ability metric and then i uh, represent a uh, risk ability metric by transitivity rules and the k element is when the high value from the represent uh, rm we found the location element of the participator can be uh, classified in into the four zone autonomous dependent linked and independent so this is uh, the diagram for the participator uh, we know if the p2 in there are located in the independent variable and b b7 in the uh, uh, dependent variable b2 is farmer uh, uh, in the quadrant independent variable the variable in the sector is very low dependency on the on the on the other factors therefore in if there there is a change from the factor then b2 will be not affected easily so if if the b1 b b3 b5 before uh, there are change uh, it's not easily to change for b2 and then the other side the b2 lies in the dependent variable the factor located in this in dependent variable quadrant are not independent when the factor changes and they affected affect the b7 the figure from this figure from this figure uh, uh we know uh p2 uh, is the k factor for the participator to apply the circular economic concept and the government is the uh, is the fi final goal and then this is the problem group problem groups uh, uh this is the same uh, step uh, uh before uh, like the like the uh, like the uh, participator group if we get the input the uh, faxo and uh, i convert the address ability matrix and then uh, use transitivity rule to represent and then i get this uh, this this table so there are number of uh, the total number of the element indicate the level driving power and uh, or dependence power and the one element the highest uh, become the value become the k k element so uh, after i get the revisit uh this ability metric i uh, i create this this diagram and i get the all element uh, located in the linkage variable the element in this problem are located in the uh, quadrant three. The quadrant three has a variable with a higher driving power and higher dependence. Uh, element with the lower dependence must be analyzed uh, further, further because their change will be influenced the other element. And after I create the diagram for the diagram, I create the ASM based model for the problem element. Uh, and I get uh, the k factor for for the problem is the infrastructure why because if if we want to apply about about the circular economy we must first we must uh, we must have the in infrastructure for for the example if we want to uh, processing processing waste po poma waste to be from the biomass to be electricity we must uh, we must have the inf infrastructure uh, infrastructure like the te technology uh, like the, like the technology or the uh, method to processing uh, from the biomass to electricity 
and the final final goal is the G7 is this is the business model. So this is the conclusion. The circular economy is the new economic concept with with the product and service uh, trade uh, in a close cycle system, which the value of, pro of the product by product or material is maintained a high uh, possible. And then the the offer overarching objective is to maximize economic growth while preferring the value of the resource or extending the life of the product or material through optimal reuse, renewal, and recycle. Uh, there are elements that influence the implementation of the circular economy, uh, namely the element in a group of the objective and participator or problem. The result are the identify the key factor uh, in implementing a circular economy in the palm oil industry are the are the factor of the first competitive advantage and farmer for the uh, participatory group and then the infrastructure in the each group respectively. For the future research, it's my wish to consider the multi-criteria decision making method in order to formulate the uh, multi-strategy that uh, incorporate the circular economic concept. Okay, maybe this is my reasons. Uh, Dr. Gede and Dr. Resma, maybe have uh, any comment or suggestion for me? Hi, good presentation actually. Uh, just listen what I'm saying and answer me the question, okay? Normally, uh, the challenges faced by the palm oil industry in Indonesia, as my point, it lies in the supply chain risk management, especially in the integration of uh, uh, decision making at the operational level, right? So, if you're considering that the problem at this level have uh, become uh, very uh, much and the industry continues to face some pressures for accessing that. So, what is your opinion on it? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, can you repeat your, your, your question, uh, Dr. Resma? Sure, 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 sure. Normally, the challenges faced by the palm oil industry in Indonesia lie in the uh, supply chain risk management. Okay, uh, especially uh, in the integration of decision making at the operational level, right? Yes. So problems at this level have become con uh, continuously more and uh, industries are facing some pressures for it. So what is your opinion or what is your suggestion for this condition? Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Esma. I think uh, uh, for, for, the supply, for the supply chain in the palm oil is, is very is very complex so every every supply every supply chain have the risk so i think to the optimal the the performance every actor we need to to analyze about the risk risk risk, risk uh, every actor so if we if we get the risk uh, in every actor we can uh, avoid Avoid about the, about the risk, and we can reduce the about the risk. Yeah. And uh, why have you chosen about the interactive structural modeling? Because if if we want to uh, apply the about the circular economy, we we must know what is the factor as the K factor, because we can we cannot uh, suddenly apply the circular economy concept. I think. And that's why we must uh, need to uh, know what is the priority factor, what is the priority problem uh, we must solve. We must we must solve. So I think the government and then maybe the farmer and the, the factory, if if no, what is the key factor? It it will be uh, easier to apply the circular economic concept. Even in chat, there is a question for you by Kaya Caparas, that is, I have a question for the presenter. Why is there a need to apply this uh, clear economic concept? Uh, I think, uh, thank you, it, it is a good question. Uh, I think not only for the agriculture industry, every industry uh, need to uh, apply the circular economic concept. Why? 
because if the if the every actor uh, apply the circular economy concept, especially in industry, it will be uh, reduced first. It will be reduced the waste, and second, uh, it will be encourage better research productivity, and then third, the, it can be improve competitive uh, ability, and then fourth, it can be uh, red uh, red reducing the environmental impact of the production and the consumption. And any, any good, good. One more question. In future, for in your presentation, you have decided to choose multi-criteria decision making. Mm -hmm. What made you to suggest that concept? I think uh, if we already uh, get the K, K factor uh, to apply the circular economic concept, uh, it's need to create two strategy. Uh, if we if we use a multi criteria decision analysis, uh, if 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 we use the multi criteria decision uh, method, we can uh, we can make priority strategy. Which one the first first strategy to apply the the circular economy concept based on the problem, based on the participator, uh, and then based on the objective. I think is uh, this this research not on not uh, cannot stop uh, uh, until here. It's that's why I create the in the future. It's need to uh, uh, create the strategy use the multi criteria decision analysis methods. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, maybe I have a question. And first of all, I want to greet uh, Professor Rao. Long time, Lucy, and great to see you here, Professor Rao. And then... Uh, yeah, nice meeting you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, with for Mr. Andy, uh, as you said before that your uh, model is quite uh, complex and I, I, I agree with you. And uh, could you give your uh, research uh, boundary? Because uh, as uh, I see at your uh, figure number two, yeah, uh, it uh, look like a forward supply chain, not a circular uh, economy. Uh, can you uh, give a explanation about your uh, uh, research uh, boundary can you uh, will you uh, go up to uh, end customer for uh, household usage of uh, oil uh, um, for this uh, product or uh, you just uh, go to uh, like a manufacturer using uh, uh, from a manufacturer what uh, do you think okay uh, uh, good Good question, uh, Dr. Kete. I think, uh, yes, uh, you correct. I need to, the boundary uh, for, for this, this, this supply chain, uh, I, I will tell about this, the, the supply chain palm oil first. And first, uh, this palm oil the start, started from the farmer and the farmer will be the, to the distributor and the distributor will be to the uh, palm oil factory. Palm oil factory will be uh, uh, produce the CPO, crude palm oil, and then the CPO will be uh, sell to the other uh, the other company. Maybe that's that's my boundary. Uh, uh, stop from the uh, the other the, the company use the crude palm oil. I think I think just 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 like that. Not until the end user or the end uh, end user. Okay, thank you. Anyone else question? There is a question for you in the chat session. Oh, uh, oh. oh. Are, no, are the, yeah. the ESM can be implemented, can be in, implemented in services industry? Of course, uh, I think ESM uh, uh, basically interpretative structural modeling, it, it's used uh, to uh, analyze the factor, the the factor which one the the 
it's made uh, it's like the if we use ESM, we use the uh, create the priority factor. The result will be the priority factor, and then we if we use the ESM, we know which one the factor will be influenced to the other factor will be uh, which one the factor will be not easy to influence the other factor. I think it's uh, ESM is a very interesting method. Maybe uh, this can is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have any other participants as far our list? Yes, Dr. Resma, you can proceed to the last presenter. Hope that our last presenter is this person, right? Any other names? Because I have joined lately, right? So I'm not sure any other names missed here. Can you help me, Shanti? Yes, he is right here. Yes. Yes, yeah, he's right here. Uh, he is right here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank okay. you. Okay, let me hold on. Yeah, Mr. Axel. Uh, yes. Uh, good afternoon, all. Yeah. Uh, sorry, due to my connection is so bad, I cannot turn on my camera. So, uh. Maybe I will start my presentation, uh, Miss Hente. Yes. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me check. Okay. It should be this one. Yeah. Okay, please. Okay. Uh, thank you all. Sorry for this uh, inconvenience. Uh, okay. Uh, today I will present my research, uh, which name improving service quality to enhance the sustainability of high education case study division of creativity and study consulting uh, maybe next and yeah, maybe i want to introduce my research first uh, please next okay why this research help or why uh, we must to increase service quality in high education uh, in service quality every year always uh, increase to uh, increase service quality to make uh, high education continues improvement to maintain this sustainable and uh, how to them make expectation and perception problem uh, make them sustain for many years from uh, high education uh, high education need to increase the satisfaction why because they must uh, they must improve themselves to make uh, them sustain and get more uh, study, uh, get more student. Next. Uh, hello, next. Okay, mungkin, uh, okay. Next, I will uh, show the research question for this uh, research. For number one, is there a significant gap between consumers' expectation and performance of division of uh, consulting and creativity? based on service quality model from reliability, responsiveness, assurance, empathy, and tangible. This is based on service quality model. Uh, next. Now, for my research, there was a service provides by division of CSC is still not satisfactory from prospect student and their uh, parents. It means that service quality that produced by high education cannot fulfill student and parents' need. So the student and parents doesn't satisfaction. And the factor from reliability, uh, responsiveness, assurance, tangible and empathy, there is has a negative gap with minus 0 0.08 and more. 
max and uh, for make this sensitive uh, for the data i check the hypothesis testing with pair t test and the result is that the uh, average performance of dvc csc is significantly smaller than expectation of prospect student and their uh, parents so it means the gap between expectation and perception is too uh, long so the negative gap uh, make a prospective student and their parents are dissatisfied uh, next uh, how is the customer uh, satisfaction index of prospect students and their parents with the service of the division csc uh, next and the result is uh, 84.45 percent it means prospective students and their parents are very satisfied with the service of division CSC. Uh, maybe it's different with before, with the customer satisfaction index. Uh, sorry, next. Uh, next. Yeah, uh, it's different conclusion with, uh, sorry, before the slide. Uh, there is different conclusion between customer satisfaction index and hypothesis testing for two pair t tests. Uh, based on uh, customer satisfaction index results, consumers are very satisfied with all service of DVC, creativity, and student consulting. Uh, but based on result of hypothesis testing, show that all variants do not satisfy the consumer. Uh, customer satisfaction index, its attribute is given the weight, meaning the customer satisfaction index pays attention to the level of importance of its variable but doesn't pay attention to the value of standard deviation to of the data in hypothesis testing attribute weighting is not carried out but pay attention to the standard deviation of the data so the hypothesis testing is more sensitive uh, next uh, based on this research i want to pay attention be weight of uh, its attribute as well as the significance of the difference between the value of the consumer expectation and performance of division creativity and student consulting so that both data processing is important for this study so uh, i consider to take the customer sentiment index and hypothesis testing to make this research more complex and make the decision is right uh, next, uh, what is the priority to improve the performance of DVC uh, creativity, creativity and student consulting? Next, uh, I use uh, based on importance performance index quadrant, the 22 service quality variables are defined into four quadrants. Quadrant A, which means high priority, quadrant B, which means uh, need development, Quadrant C, which means low priority, and quadrant B, which means consider to expense. Uh, next. This is the result of the priority determine the uh, importance performance analysis and hypothesis testing. Uh, for the uh, importance performance analysis, I got four quadrant for 22 variable and uh, with high priority there is four variable the priority uh, considered by the higher t score value has priority for improvement so uh, the variable with high t score which means is uh, very important to uh, to develop and to evaluating first next uh, what suggestion will be made to increase the satisfaction of the prospective students and their parents with the service of the division creativity and student consulting? Uh, next. Uh, for the improvement priority one, uh, for example, variable assurance five, division of creativity and student consulting staff convoys the program information to prospect students and parents of prospective students. So I made the cost-effect diagram, which consists with eight piece. 
namely people, process, policies, procedure, price, promotion, place, and product so that the proposal is right on the target. Uh, I uh, improve every variable with this cost effect diagram because uh, division, uh, creativity, and student consulting based on marketing at uh, one university. So I decided to uh, consist eight pieces in my cost effect diagram to check about the uh, marketing too. So we can uh, find the root cost of this satisfaction rate. Next. Uh, conclusion for this research. Uh, next. Uh, sorry, next. Uh, sorry, uh, next. Okay, uh, maybe a uh, conclusion of this research is uh, the suggestion of this research are training for staff in uh, creativity. Uh, okay, uh, division, yeah, the are the training for the staff of creativity and student consulting. Uh, the training, which means to increase the knowledge uh, for the staff and also make them easy to uh, make. Uh, marketing on the target. After that, making the direct and indirect delivery procedure is very important because uh, there is no procedure, so uh, they do the they do the job not by procedure. So the satisfaction rate is very different and very variance. Uh, and then I developing the market search to support a service activity. So uh, from this development. I get the good uh, marketing, uh, marketing strategy to make the parents and students satisfied. Uh, for further research, service quality measurement can be carried out for our division that are directly related to the student and their parents, where this service quality measure must be carried out continues to provide maximum results. Okay, next. Uh, Uh, next, uh, sorry. Actually, it was a good presentation. Okay, yes. Am I uh, audible? Yes, uh, there is my presentation for my research. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. There's two some, uh, simple questions. Okay. Why have taken hypothesis paired T test? Uh, sorry, Miss. Uh, in your can you presentation, you have in your presentation you have explained about the hypothesis paired T test. I have seen a term. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, or about. Can you explain? Uh, okay, uh, tell me, tell me. About the test, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, for the t test. Uh, hello. Yes. Yes. Tell me. You are audible. Uh, yes. For the t test, uh, I use for this research. It, uh, because uh, I want to uh, look the data very sensitive with the different or the change uh, next uh, next the research. So uh, with this sensitivity, I can uh, uh, sorry sorry uh, there is oh uh, the t test uh, will be uh, make sure the research for the next and also make the data uh, see very different maybe in the next uh, research. Okay, okay, no problem. Yeah. And you have used uh, cost effect diagram, right? 
Yes, cost effect diagram. Okay, so for your research, uh, what are what are the main categories you have uh, taken for uh, cause and effect diagram? The category I take for eight Ps, uh, which mean uh, uh, eight based on uh, that one? eight eight Ps, uh, eight Ps in marketing mix. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, Division uh, Creativity and Student Consulting is a uh, part of Division Marketing uh, of the high education. So they improve the marketing to make a strategy and good sales for the student and parents. So uh, based on their job, I use uh, eight piece to ensure the marketing point and satisfaction point uh, include in my analysis. So for the result of my analysis can can be the right way to make improvement on marketing and also the satisfaction of the student and parents. Okay, good. Can you suggest some other diagrams for uh, this work? Other than what you had chosen, can you suggest some other uh, diagrams or some other categories for analyzing this concept? Uh, for analyzing this concept, uh, I only use cost effect diagram, only. But uh, my cost effect diagram is used for the 22 variable, and also uh, make them very detailed for its variable and category of reliability, responsiveness, assurance, tangible, and practice. So the service can be able to analyze all of the uh, marketing, uh, service, and goods. Uh, okay. Yes. In chat, you have a question. In your oh. in your research question number three, why does the factor in quadrant three need development? Oh, okay. Uh, from Mr. Hendrik, uh, thank you for the question. In my uh factor in quadrant why need development? Because uh, in my calculation, there is a negative gap. So with this negative gap, it means uh, to be improved, uh, which means the negative gap is not satisfaction from parents and students. So uh, I decided to make them development. Develop. Uh, is it as answer? Yes, thank you, Miss Mr. Axel. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you, so much. thank you. Now I pass on to our uh, session chair, Gary Agus, sir, can continue by, with your questions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sharma. I just uh, have a questions. Uh, for your what what is your uh, research uh, limitation and then uh, how uh, will you uh, improve your uh, research for your uh, next uh, research what is your 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 suggestion for the next research not for uh, the company or the object of this research uh, for next research maybe uh, it will be the continuous improvement research because uh, the, satis uh, the satisfaction may be changed uh, in the next research. So uh, for the next research, I suggest uh, to... Uh, to, uh, to make the analysis from all division uh, with a uh, student and parents uh, uh, hello hello yeah. uh, yes uh, sorry sorry uh, because the my connection so uh, the suggestion for the next research is uh, maybe we can contribute the division which communicate with parents and student too so the next research will be uh, make a good decision or good result that make a good uh, good change for the this, this division 
Oke, okay. thank Uh-oh. you very much. Uh, you welcome, Mr. Igede. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, congratulations to all the presenters that already are presenting the paper and give your best effort in delivering your research. And of course, uh, our deepest gratitude also goes to our session chair today. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Egede Agus, and also Dr. Reshma for the great sharing sessions. We, we believe that your questions, your feedback, your suggestions will do valuable to all the presenters to improve their papers. So finally, thank you again to all the audience and also the participants who already participated and also actively involved yeah, in the sessions by asking a question or giving comment or feedback in the Zoom chat box. And your active participation and contribution in the scientific forum of the International Conference on Industrial and System Engineering, Technology Innovation and Management is highly appreciated. Okay, so before that, allow me to uh, give some recognitions to all the presenters. Okay, hold on. Yes, okay. So now is the time for the session chairs, Dr. Igede Agus and of course, Dr. Sh Dr. Resma to congratulate all the presenters yeah, by giving the e-certificates to all of them. And then I will share the certificates to you. Okay, please welcome Dr. Igede Agus yeah. and also Dr. Resma. Wait. Okay. Okay, please, Dr. Okay, maybe I first. Okay, uh, congratulate for Yaran uh, Boy, uh, uh, Alin Sano, for a uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I, oh, sorry to interrupt, maybe two other yep. participants, please kindly mute your audio so we can hear the session chairs, yeah? And congratulations to the presenters. Okay, please again welcome Dr. Igde and also Dr. Resma. Okay. Okay, I want to congratulate, uh, congratulate uh, Kiran Boy Oksan Elian Sano for uh, his uh, nice uh, presentation for uh, today. And then thanks for. Uh, Okay, is uh, Mr. Geran Boy is here? Yeah, Mr. Geran Boy is here. Okay, perhaps not here. Because actually we will take a photo, yeah? <laughs> but unfortunately not here, okay. It's okay, so we can continue to the next presenters. Okay. And now I congratulate Wayne Chen Chan from for the topic a study of AGV collaboration with the Internet of Things concept for collusion avoidance at warehouse in the section. Congratulations! Actually, I missed your Thank presentation. You. Even then, uh, from my heart, uh, congratulations for you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Okay, next I want to uh, calculate uh, Dr. Kwan Chun Huang for a presentation with topic of study of design and development of cyber uh, physical application. Uh, I think he left. Uh, he oh, left he left. Uh, yeah, okay. 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 Thanks. <laughs> okay, next. Now I congratulate Pranatani, the topic, the application of U-shaped line balancing at furniture manufacturing. Congratulations, and all the best for your uh, further work. 
I think the presenters also not in this room anymore. <laughs> so we can proceed to the next. Okay. And next, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Samuel uh, Sunya uh, for uh, his presentation with a title, a short note for uh, fashion uh, cold chain network models. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have joined your presentation too. It was a wonderful presentation. All the best for your uh, further research work. Thank you. Thank you. Now I congratulate Henry Kaya Aplanto for the topic analysis of the factors affecting the palm oil industry supply chain with consideration of a circular economy. Congratulations. And this is a social uh, relevant contribution project. And uh, I wish you all the best for uh, further research work on this topic. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Resma. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. And the last but not the least, I congratulate uh, Excel Farian uh, Kurniawan that already uh, present with the uh, title uh, Improving Service uh, Quality uh, for Sustainability of uh, sorry, Higher Education uh, Case Study decision of uh, creativity and study collaboration university of x and congratulations for your uh, presentation uh, thank you mr thank you all congratulations and all the best thank you okay. miss okay so once again congratulations to all presenters okay so now to memorize and also cherish the moment let us have a group photo yeah a group photo together so i will stop share first okay okay please kindly turn on your camera so we can have a good a group photo for this breakout room two for the session one the morning session yeah before we start the afternoon sessions okay Okay, everyone, please kindly uh, turn on your uh, camera. All right, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, great, lovely. Yes. Okay, everyone, ready? Okay, on my count, ready? Look at your camera, yeah? On my count, one, two, three, smile. Okay, great. And then another window. Hold on the smile. Perhaps you are in the second window. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, great. Okay, so actually after this, uh, we still have some few information. So uh, do not, not yet uh, go anywhere first, please. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so this is related once again to the post-conference information. Yeah, this is very important to all the presenters and also the author who already presenting their uh, research papers. Yeah, so once again, we would like to remind you about the timeline and also the process that you must do uh, uh, to be ordered to be included if you want to be proceed. Yeah, if you want to be proceed to the next publication opportunity, which is the international journal recommendation given, please kindly send your extended full paper, okay? The extended one, yeah? After having revision and also extended uh, of the wording, at least a uh, day plus 14 or at last at 7 May, yeah? Two weeks after this conference finish, you can send your extended one, okay? The extended one, not the same, yeah? Not the same conference paper uh, to avoid the self-plagiarism, yeah? You should, uh, you can upload your extended full paper for the journal recommendation if you wish to proceed further. You can upload under the Scholar Vein account for the menu upload, and then you can just click re upload. 
And then after that, the committee will do the scientific review process again for your extended full paper to be given the international journal recommendation, which is indexed by international indexer, yeah, starting from Scopus, Web of Science, DOAG, Copernicus, and more. And then after that, if you are agreed to the journal recommendation given, you should upload your consent letters, yeah, because this is as the official sign that the the conference committee has already finished as their task, yeah, in giving the international journal recommendation for your extended full paper, and then for your uh, existing existing conference paper that you already submitted and already passed the review process already published in the conference paper proceeding by Research Synergy Press. So under these two uh, proceeding series yeah, for the engineering and also the management. So you can always refer to these links. Okay, you can also refer to these links. Okay, and then, yeah. So this is the last sessions of the breakout room. So this is also important. Why this is important? Because your experience today will encourage and also inspiring other scholars uh, to attend and also to participate the the next or uh, the upcoming scientific forum. Yeah. So in this occasion, I would like to invite the representative of this uh, breakout room too. In the first session, I would like to invite. Okay, um, Mr. Samuel, can you please share your experience in today's conference? Yes. Oh, um, well, thank you very much for uh, in inviting me and uh, allowing me to participate in this conference. I, I learned a lot and um, I think one major thing is that there are so many different aspects of uh, industry and industrial engineering, and there's always something new to learn. So thank you for having me. And um, it, it was a very good learning experience. Okay, great. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Samuel, and also good luck on your future studies and research. Okay, and then maybe uh, perhaps one more sharing sessions. It could be from, okay, uh, this is, I know that this is the, the network or the colleague from Dr. Gede. Perhaps you know uh, Professor Rao. I haven't met you. Perhaps you want to say something in this HSA team conference, Professor? Maybe Dr. Gede want to say something also. <laughs> yeah. Are you calling me? Yes, Prof. Maybe you can share. What do you uh, think about today's conference, Prof? Yeah, I to think motivate others? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's very good. Yeah. The the because uh, uh yeah the the right now is uh, in the uh, COVID nineteen the situation. Yeah. You see that we cannot the, the you know, see each other. However, the go through this conference, I think uh, we can share uh, our uh, idea with the the the, uh, the people from the other countries. I think it, yeah, this is very good uh, the opportunities. Yeah. Thank you for the. This conference uh, give us uh, this opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Professor Rao, for your support also in this conference. So thank you so much once again. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, so to end this session, I would like again to remind all the participants to kindly fill the feedback forms. Okay, to kindly fill the feedback form as can be seen in the screen. Yeah, and then after this, we will have a break until 1 p.m. Uh, Indonesia time, or it should be one hour ahead. Yeah, for Taiwan, Philippines, uh, Malaysia. So it should be start at 2 p.m. at Taiwan. Uh, Manila and also Malaysia times. So I guess see you again at 1 uh, p.m. Indonesia time. And do not forget that the at 3.40, yeah, at 3.40, we will have the closing ceremony. Yeah, the closing ceremony. And we will announce, we will announce the we will announce the wording sessions, yeah, for the best uh, presentations. Okay, for the best presentations, the base paper. Uh, who will be the base paper and today we will have a uh, two base paper yeah for the engineering and also the uh, management tracks and then after that of course our uh, recognitions to the session chairs yeah who will be given at the closing ceremony so hope also dr gede and dr resma can join the closing ceremony although it's still 
later on ya yeah, 3:40 uh, p 3:40 p.m. in Indonesia time but hope that you can join also at the closing ceremony so once again on behalf of the organizing committee so i would like to say thank you for your kind attention in this breakout room to session one morning sessions and now we will have break until 1 p.m. Indonesia time or 2 p.m. at Taiwan Manila Malaysia time. So have a good day and see you again in a few minutes, 1 p.m. Thank you, everyone, once again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.